Happy holidays, everybody. It's your boy, Wayne Breezy. The San Francisco 49ers are home this week, week 16 of the NFL, and they host the Baltimore Ravens. The Baltimore Ravens are coming into town, and let's hope it's nothing like Santa coming into town. Let's get down to the keys to victory, because if I'm talking the way I feel like this game is going to go, and I know you want this game to go the way you want it to go, the 49ers must stick to these keys in order to do a couple of things, right? They'll come out as the best team in football with the record of 12 and three. All right. They'll also, they'll also, no one will ever be talking about this team as far as not playing any good teams because they'll knock off the other 11 and three team this season. And so this is a preview to Super Bowl 58. Guys, you can check this article out right here on www.49erswebzone.com. Make sure you check it out. And if you're in the shopping mood, make sure you go to residency.com. Use the promo code SFBREEZY, okay? And you can save on your total purchase. It'll save $5 on your total purchase. And trust me, it's definitely worth the saving. They have really good uh, sales over there. So go check it out, man. Uh, SF Breezy, you can get the beanie hats. You can get the caps. All those good things, the, the hats you see your players wearing, you don't want to miss out on those. Again, the promo code is going to be SF Breezy. It's right there in the bottom of the screen. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the keys to victory. Week 16 versus the Ravens. The first thing that they're going to have to do is contain the quarterback. Now, look, it's Lamar Jackson. He's probably one of the most explosive quarterbacks still in the league, former MVP of the league, and he does a couple of things well, okay? Number one, he can throw the daggone ball, and that's what he's been doing. But let's talk about containing him. You want to continue to keep him to throw from throwing the ball, right? You want him to throw the ball actually in this game. And you want to make sure when he's in that pocket that you're getting some good hits on him because you want him to throw the ball and be a little bit flustered. Now, listen, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to want to get home and get the sacks. Let the sacks come. But the first thing that the 49ers must do in this game is contain him. He is the Baltimore Ravens' leading rusher with over 700 rushing yards. All right, so he will take off and run. And we're not talking about just quarterback designs. We're talking about quarterback scrambles and, and extending plays and getting outside the pocket. The thing that he's doing this, uh, a little bit different this year is getting out of the pocket and trying to get the ball downfield. Now, I expect the 49ers' secondary to continue their great coverage downfield. Uh, hopefully, Javon Hargrave will be back to uh, a apply that pressure up the middle, which would be great for the San Francisco 49ers, but they have to find a way to contain uh, the quarterback and contain Lamar Jackson because if he gets outside, if he rushes up those A gaps and those B gaps, these can be big gains for the Baltimore Ravens. And you don't want to extend plays, right? You don't want to give them first downs on third downs and things like that. And that's probably particularly when he's going to run. If it's a third and long, be aware of the quarterback. Be disciplined out there on the edge, contain the edge, and you will find yourself to a victory. You want to limit him. He has the most explosive plays on this team with 26. That's double than any of their uh, weapons, <laughs> any of their skill set weapons, right? Any of their running backs, uh, any of their wide receivers. Lamar Jackson will get you gains plus 10 yards. He has 26 of them, all right? So, you have to find a way to contain him. I think they'll go with that same game plan they used in Philadelphia. They're actually, the same game plan they've been using all season long when it comes to mobile quarterbacks, all right? The, the, the most that they have given up from a, from a quarterback uh, is mobility this year would be their last game against the Arizona Cardinals. At 49 yards for Kyler Murray. He had a couple of four rushes, a couple of four. Yep, I said it. And then you got to go back to the old Cardinals game, uh, the first game when they gave up 48 yards to Josh Dobbs. I think that was just Kyler Murray trying to let everybody know you should have never went with Josh Dobbs. No, I'm just playing. Kyler Murray was dealing with an injury at that time. But I will say that the 49ers do have to be disciplined out there. They can't break down in, can, in their, in their uh, containment because if they do, Lamar Jackson is that smart enough of a quarterback. Remember, he's a former MVP. He is not a ding-dingy quarterback. He he will be smart enough to say, hey, they over pursue. 
I'm Ghost. I'm Audi 5000. Contain the quarterback. The 49ers would be sliding into another win. Since we're talking about running, the 49ers have to get back to stopping the run, right? They have to they have to stop the run. Now I know they gave up over 230 plus yards to the Arizona Cardinals, which has got to be the outlier, which has got to be the worst uh, for the San Francisco 49ers uh, all season long. But I tell you what, they got to get back to stopping the run and limiting those explosive plays. If you go back to that Arizona Cardinals game, I mean, the majority of those runs were explosive. And if you go back to when they look like they're not able to stop the run, these power running backs, that's kind of like where they struggle. And that's what Baltimore has in Gus Edwards. He's more of a power back. He's like a James Conner, probably not as agile or not as fast, not as one cutty, but he will try to run up that middle. And so the 49ers are going to have to find a way to get that interior defense up front to stop the run, plug those, fill up those gaps. So that way those linebackers can come in and plug the gaps. All right. So they got to soak up the offensive line on the blocks. And again, uh, I know Javon Hargrave uh, is, is expected to play in this game. Uh, he should be a big help, but the Niners will be having some good rotational depth now that they get their starting defensive tackle back out there. So they got to stop the run, force the Ravens to be one-dimensional, and that's kind of what you want, right? Because if you could take the run away at some point, if the only person running the ball successfully is Lamar Jackson, that's a win for the 49ers. It just depends on when he's doing it. But let's just take away the run from the other running backs. Let's take out Justice Hill. Let's take out Gus Edwards. If the 49ers can do that, and force Lamar Jackson, who he, he, which he wants to do. He wants to throw the ball, force him to throw the ball. It could be a long day for the Baltimore Ravens. The Niners' defense is just as good, if not any be better, than the Ravens' defense. These are the top two defenses in the league. The Niners have a top run defense in the league. So I expect them to come back out there and take away the run. I believe they're ranked number two. So that's pretty high. Uh, like I said, there was a great outlier against the Arizona Cardinals where they gave up over 230 yards on the ground, which is not uniquely sound for the San Francisco 49ers. It's not something that they typically do. I think they get back to that, which leads me to the key of number three. They have to play fundamentally sound. Look, when you look at the reason why they gave up those rushing yards, it was because players were out of position. That's not fundamental. And it was because players were missing tackles. That's not fundamental. The Niners got to get back to the basics of basic playing football style on defense. And I know a lot of the stuff has to do with the defense, but you're dealing with a pretty dynamic offense led by a dynamic player. And they do have some pass catching weapons. They might not be the Brandon Ayukes and and, and uh, George Kittles and the, and the Debo Samuels, but they have guys that can still catch the ball because they're professional football players. And if you leave them open, they're going to make plays, right? So the Niners got to play fundamentally sound they have to wrap and tackle there were 16 missed tackles in week 15 against the arizona cardinals 16 the week prior to that it was 15 that's 31 missed tackles the niners need to trim that down at less than double digits in this particular game there's going to be missed tackles just about every game but the niners have had some games where they've had single digit missed tackles like against the new york football giants against the dallas cowboys so they can do it right they just have to play fundamentally sound now look there are different players on the football field at this time uh players that normally typically don't start for the san francisco 49ers so with that being said the san francisco 49ers need to come out there and make sure that they're on their p's and q's and that they're making sure that they wrap and that they tackle that's super important wrapping and tackling super important in this particular game you miss a tackle in this game that's potential that the play can take be taken to the house so the 49ers have to play fundamentally sound it's just something that they have to get used to doing and i believe that they get back to doing just that against the baltimore ravens on monday night and their throwbacks all right all right here we go let's get to some offensive keys of the play let's get the ball to the outside look they have a good they run a three four base style type of a defense okay which means they have a pretty good interior and they got some linebackers that like to fill those gaps okay and so when you look inside oh, patrick 
uh, Queen and, and, and Roquan Smith, I, I would pretty much say, hey, we're going to run up the middle, but let's kind of like get these linebackers to the outside. Let's kind of get them gassed a little bit. I'm expecting the San Francisco 49ers to do a lot of lateral type movement of plays, a lot of screens, a lot of outside zone runs. We know one 49er player that likes the outside zone runs. His name is George Kittle. So get the ball to the outside. If you see Kittle motion to one side, expect that ball to be ran to that side. They're going to try to stretch the field and get that ball as lateral as possible. This is going to wear and tear on the defense later on in the game. So if they're not super successful early in the game, expect them to be super successful later on in the game. I don't expect too many explosive plays on the ground, but then again, when you got the best running back in the league who is Mr. Explosive himself in Christian McCaffrey, there's always a chance that a play can go for plus 10 yards. So let's get the ball to the outside. Let's get those big blockers out there. I like what they did last week against the Arizona Cardinals when they brought in Charlie Warner. They brought in George Kittle. They had two tight ends on the field where they were in 12 personnel. All right, I liked it a lot. Opposed to 21 personnel, which is what they flip. I do know that the Ravens do struggle in 21 personnel and having those particular type of defensive players on the field. So I know that Kyle Shanahan is going to pretty much try try to manipulate what the Ravens do and dictate what they do but let's get this ball to the outside let's stretch this field expect toss plays expect stretch plays expect sweeps expect those balls to be to the outside of the field expect the swing passes expect anything that's to the outside even when it comes to the next key expect things to get to the outside get these guys moving get those linemen moving laterally right opposed to vertically and then the vertical stretches down the field will come into play a little bit later on in the game all right which leads me to the Number five, key to victory, the 49ers, Brock Purdy has to continue to be decisive. The one thing I don't worry about when it comes to Brock Purdy is confidence, right? But in this particular game, he's going to be playing probably the smartest. He's going to be playing against, excuse me, probably the smartest defense that he's seen all season. Now, Brock Purdy, this is like going to school and outsmarting the smart guy, right? And so for Brock Purdy, he has to continue to be decisive out there, continue to go through his progressions quickly, which is something that he does very well, get through those progressions, and then make the right read, right? Don't overplay. Don't overthrow. Don't over this. Don't over that. If you don't see your guy uh, being able to be thrown open or or open, like don't don't de- don't even take the don't even take it. Take what the defense is giving you. It's a battle right you want to win this battle you want to win this particular game you got to take what the defense is giving you the defense will aid and bed you they have really good safeties out there i would stay away from the middle of the field at some point in time you can test the middle of the field but get those linebackers covering man get those linebackers expect a lot of outside throws something that brock Purdy thrives in this particular season getting the ball outside to his receivers to his pass catchers quickly accurately This is going to be a good game where Brock Purdy's efficiency is going to come into play. And then all that stuff about him being efficient and him not having a lot of pass attempts, who cares? Brock Purdy goes out there, whether it's 20 attempts, whether it's 30 attempts, Brock Purdy does what he needs to do. And the 49ers get that dub just about every single time. So when it comes to the offensive line, I'm expecting the offensive line to do what they've been doing consistently throughout the year. Keeping Brock Purdy pretty much upright, whether it's two or three sacks a game, okay. But keep him upright to where he can continue to be decisive with the football and confident with the football. So confidence is definitely a key, something that Brock Purdy doesn't lack. But if you want Brock Purdy to limit mistakes against this team, which is going to disguise just about every single play like they're going to show one coverage pre-snap and then they're going to drop it to their real coverage post snap so Brock Purdy is going to have to process even more quickly than he's been doing all season if Brock Purdy continues to do what he's been doing and excelling the way he's been excelling the 49ers will I won't say easily walk into a victory but this is another key that can get these 49ers over the top so if we do a quick rewind you got to contain Lamar Jackson you got to find a way to stop the run continue to play fundamentally sound they got to wrap and tackle all right got to wrap and tackle try to stretch the ball and get the ball to the outside and be decisive take what the defense is giving you uh on offense all right these are the keys to victory and to beating the ravens week 16 in the nfl i just want to wish everybody a happy holidays merry christmas uh to everybody out there 
Please spend time and enjoy time with your loved ones. You don't want to miss out on that. That comes first and foremost. And then let's enjoy some football with some hot cocoa. All right. Happy holidays from your boy Wayne Breezy over here on the Wayne Breezy Network, man. Love you guys. Stay up. Stay faithful. And don't forget to check out the article, 49erswebzone.com. Thanks for watching.